Hey, this is Lee from Monstrosity, and you're watching That Metal Interview Podcast. Welcome back to the world of the Rock Metal Podcasts, and this is That Metal Interview Podcast, which you are tuned into, and my name is James, your host, all the way from the state of Texas, and I truly appreciate your presence and your support. Thank you guys and girls for streaming or just playing that play button and uh, just checking out the podcast, right? Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. That Metal Interview Podcast. Uh, subscribe and ring the bell, blah, blah, blah. You know what to do. And anyways, one of the innovators from the late 80s of death metal. Of course, we all know the battle was between Jeff Becerra of Possessed and Chuck Schuldiner of Death as the fathers of death metal. Uh, but my next guest is Lee Harrison from the band Monstrosity and he is the drummer and the founder for the band and he's going to talk about his experiences uh, throughout the life of Mr. Harrison uh, whether it be with Malevolent Creation or with Monstrosity and he'll talk about that and uh, he's going to share some stories so very cool right now let's play uh, one of my favorite Monstrosity jams Cosmic Pandemia check it out we'll be right back
did your head get crushed just like mine did as always my head gets crushed just uh, a little metaphoric conversation there as far as being melted by metal in your face so anyways right now let's go straight to the interview with mr lee harrison of monstrosity here you are enjoy yeah so first of all uh what part of the world are you at are you in florida uh tampa right now awesome uh so you guys just finished uh south american tour is that correct yeah not too long ago how did that go any problems out there uh no it was good actually um the only problem would be sleep but it really wasn't too too bad um you know uh a lot of flights the problem the problem with doing all that is that you know you get off get out of you know get out of playing the show at about you know one or two in the morning you're still wide awake and then you got a lobby call at you know four or five in the morning even six you know even six and seven is still early um it's just enough time to like barely get an hour or two sleep you know so by the time you get to sleep it's time to wake up and then you got to go to the airport and uh do the airport games you know it's always you know wait in lines and checking in and all that stuff takes forever and dealing with the baggage um yeah. and the thing is they're like sometimes they're like smaller you have to do like several connecting flights so it's like an all-day thing you know so, but uh you kind of rearrange your schedule to where you sleep more in the evening than you do you know you catch catch a few hours like in the late afternoon and yeah you know make it work that way so uh that's the real issue you know sleep. usually um with that kind of stuff um europe's different because you got a bus and you can just you know after the sound check you go right back to, you know you crawl in your bunk and go back to sleep and then travel um, to the next city yeah so the yeah, you know, so. so the South American promoter, I guess he does his, his best to to have uh, each gig not too far, right? I mean, you can only do so yeah, much with well, the flights. Yeah. The, the issue is that you know they the flights generally you know they want to get you there early, and the flights tend to be in the morning. You know, they, uh, you know you don't want to get there too late. So I understand, and it, you know it costs them money to have a day off in between the shows. You know, because you know they don't want to have to spend the extra hotel for you know five yeah. guys so i understand it you know but yeah yeah it's just financial yeah so yeah. uh so the last passage of existence 2018 was the last one you guys released i read uh one of your posts uh that you guys are uh in the studio is that correct yeah yeah actually we, we did the drums about a year ago um and then we spent like from june to about december Uh, recording guitars we took our time and like uh got the guitars done and then uh then we got the offered for the european tour and, and the south american tour so we kind of got sidetracked with that stuff um yeah kind of wish you know we had been able to finish the album first but at the same time you know when the offers come you got to take them so yeah um, you got to work you know, yeah. they're good if they're good offers you got to you know you don't want to turn them down and um so we did those tours and then uh as it the plan is right now mid-july we're going in to start the bass and then i'm kind of working on the lyrics right now so we're hoping to get the lyrics and stuff done the, the loose plan is to finish the music by like september and then uh hopefully send it off to mix september october somewhere in there nice so who's all uh, involved in the, in the recording um Did It's you play guitar? Myself. Also. Myself on drums. Matt Barnes is on guitar. He, he did all the rhythms. Um, Mark Van Erp is on bass. And uh, Ed Webb will be doing the vocals. Ed is the same. Uh, he's the new singer, right? The newest uh, addition? Correct. And that guy's good. Where'd you find this guy? Um, I've known him for a long time. He's He's been a, you know, he's from Tampa and... He was in Diabolic originally, and then uh, he did um, he did an album and some touring with Massacre. And uh, I've seen him at shows forever. And I really, you know, when uh, we kind of were needing a singer, we were kind of auditioning guys and looking looking at kind of the younger 
new bands or whatever trying to see if we could find somebody that would you know fit the bill and uh terry butler from obituary he actually recommended ed and, and you know once he mentioned it it was like oh yeah of course you know i didn't even i didn't even think of it you know but it's, it was such a perfect idea because his vocals are pretty sick and uh, oh, yeah. i knew that from because uh, he did he did the diabolic the fourth album that they did out in texas and uh I've always liked his vocals, so like as soon as as soon as Terry mentioned, that, I was like, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that guy. I forgot all, you know, you know, yeah. I forgot about him, and uh, that, I, and then once he put it in my head, it just uh, it made total sense. So you're good friends with Terry Butler? Yeah, we we've done a bunch of touring together with uh, various projects. Um, I did the Tardy Brothers project with uh, John and. Donald obituary yeah. and uh, he was in on that and we played some shows with that and then uh, I toured with obituary in 2012 so we were kind of hanging then and then we did the inhuman condition thing I did some touring with them so oh that's right yeah uh, so Mark yeah Terry both love him guy's awesome yeah he's a cool guy I had him on the show last year uh, so I was gonna mention Mark uh, he's been there with the band forever, huh? Is he like one of the first ones, one of the first bass players? Mark Van Erp? Yes. Yeah, he was the original. He was, me and him kind of formed the band together, you know, back in the day. Like, it was, um, uh, I knew him when he was in Cynic. And uh, I joined Malevolent. And then he was in Malevolent for a minute after I was out. And then uh, after he was out of Malevolent, me and him got together and started putting songs together for the or infinity demo and uh we did the finished you know obviously got george in the band and did all that and then uh played played a bunch of shows and we got signed into nuclear blast and did the first album and then we did a european tour and did some more shows in the states and then uh it was you know just time went by and we ended up doing the slaves and masters demo he was on that and then he got into some trouble with the law, so he had to kind of bail out of the band uh, for Millennium. Yeah. And, and, and then, uh, you know, we've always kept in touch and whatnot. So um, at some point, um, the bass player we had, Mike Pagioni, had something where he was unable to make it, so we brought Van Erp back in and... Uh, you know, kind of... Yeah. Right now, it kind of it kinda goes, you know where I can, you know, switch players and, um, you know, as people understand that, you know, I'm going to have a solid lineup and uh, I can kind of get away with bringing in different players and that, you know, whoever's available kind of at the time and uh, whoever's working out best, you know, is kind of who's who's there, you know. Yeah. Some, you know, now we're all older, you know, people have different schedules, they got other projects going, they got this and that, touring schedules, commitments, uh, jobs, stuff, kids, you know, a um, couple of the guys got kids, you know, so, you yeah, know, time, working around that kind of thing. Time's change, yeah. Um, Mike Pagioni had actually moved to Ukraine when uh, we started using Mark, so that was the reason we started using him. Um so like he actually like moved to a different country um obviously he's not there now because of the you know situation and whatnot but i guess he met a girl there and moved over there so yeah um you know so people have different life things going on and uh different things plus you know i don't know just it's nice to work with different players for me you know sometimes just to mix things up and uh you know uh yeah. at this stage you know it's kind of whoever works out best for the situation you know yeah you get the best lineup you can I understand yeah, yeah and uh, just whoever's available and what you know yeah um, some people don't know uh, George Fisher from Cannibal uh, was your vocalist for, for the band right do you still keep in touch with George or is that done for uh, you know he's just so busy I do see him from time to time and talk to him when I do see him you know he's all, he's cool um trying to think of the last show I saw him at it was uh might have been Malevolent yeah I think it was Malevolent it was the last show I saw him at and then uh we hung out there and had a good time and George is always cool man yeah uh, so take us back in time Lee what year did you 
start or how old were you when you started on drums or guitar because you play guitar too so which is your first instrument and how old were you uh, i was seven um you're a small boy okay yeah and uh I did start guitar first, but my dad, he got me an acoustic guitar and like, he wanted me to, I'm left-handed and he wanted me to play right-handed. And so I kind of got frustrated with it and uh, didn't really go anywhere with it. And then um, and then not long after that, he, he had a, a friend of his that had an apartment complex and he was, the guy was given drum lessons. Um, the guy had a renter that was giving drum lessons and uh, he worked at the University of, uh, and he was in the University of Miami Jazz Band and uh, he ended up giving me lessons kind of every Wednesday for, you know, a little while and I kind of got, I fell into the drumming a little easier and then eventually, you know, being around right-handed guitar players and just always picking up a guitar, I did end up picking up guitar right-handed so I, I was glad that my dad kind of stuck, you know, forced me to do it that way just yeah. because it would have been hard to you know be a left-handed player um, yeah um but yeah so pretty much seven and then um i think by nine i had my first kid like i i started i had a, like you know my dad built me like a little wood pad he like it was like you know a piece of wood with like a inner tube tire on top of it is it like a little drum pad that i started with and i eventually got a snare and then finally they got me a drum kit Nice. Five piece. I actually still have the five piece. Really? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's cool. So, uh, which is your first band? Was it a high school thing or was it later on? Uh, my first band was Ozone. and That was in like fifth grade. And uh, it was me and a couple other guys from the neighborhood. Um, you know, we were kids though. So we really didn't get it too, too together as much as we wanted, you know. But uh, we tried. And then, uh, I don't know, around 13, I had a band called Black Rose, and we were doing, like, uh, Scorpions, like the old 70s Scorpions, yeah. Top of the Bill, was, we played that song. Um, nice. Dio, Judas Priest, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, the cover band, yeah. And those guys were kind of older, you know, and, and, like, they weren't... Unfortunately, they weren't as serious, but they could, they could play a little bit better, you know what I mean? But they just weren't they were partying more than they were taking it serious you know i mean i was only 13 then too so it was like, wow you, know, you started young wow yeah and then uh um those guys kind of fell by the wayside and where i was there just wasn't a whole lot of people that were into playing music you know so um when i was 17 or whatever i ended up going back to miami to where i'd grown up and a, a friend of a friend of mine uh, that I grew up with, he introduced me to a singer, and um, he was telling me about this band Cynic that was starting out. And back then, Cynic was a thrash band; they weren't like the jazzy thing that they are now. Okay. So, um, anyway, so I drove down to Miami and checked out. There was like a little warehouse scene. There was like a band called Paradox and Cynic, and um, there was a couple other bands too. Um, they were running around, but anyway, I got, I met all those guys. That's when I met Mark Van Erp and, uh, I, you know, the, the singer guy that I worked with, I stayed with him for a little bit, but, um, you know, it just didn't ever really happen with those guys. And, uh, I ended up just really being a friend to cynic and helping them try to like, you know, I would hang out with Mark and we'd go pass out flyers and we'd drive all across Miami, you know, just, uh, trying to promote cynic or we'd you know i'd take them to their i had a van so i would you know we'd load up sean's drums and we'd go take them i'd take them to their show or whatever wherever they were playing you know and, um and then eventually malevolent creation moved from buffalo to fort lauderdale and they were kind of the new band on the scene down there and uh they were complaining about their drummer not being able to play double bass and what so i ended up uh talking to phil at some show or something and he told me to come up and that's when i did that you know i ended up moving from miami to fort lauderdale and joining malevolent oh cool and then uh, monstrosity comes along uh how old were you when that uh, got formed i was in i was in malevolent for about uh nine months uh pretty much the year 1989 and then uh things with phil didn't work out so i went back to 
the west coast of Florida, and uh, I was talking with atheists. They they were talking about needing a drummer. Kelly, yep. Uh, their, their drummer was going to go to college, but he didn't, he didn't end up going. So like that didn't work out. And then uh, it was around that time Mark Van Erp was in Malevolent. He joined. Like I said, he joined when I when I left the band. He came into the band. And they did some touring. So I was still hearing kind of the inner workings of the band through Mark, you know, and like I knew it was. And uh, in the meantime, I had met George through this guy named Ted. And uh, we were going to put something together. And then when Mark was out of Malevolent Creation, we we got together and it was like, you know, oh, well, you know, we can use George as a singer and the guy Ted, he uh, he was a guitar player and we were going to use him and it kind of like, you know, oh, you know, everybody, everybody will get a gig, you know, it'll work out wherever, you know, we'll just put this thing together, you know, our, the, the thing that I was putting together with George and the other guy and then Mark, the thing me and Mark were having, we put it together and, you know, there's our band. But the other guy didn't, he didn't like that idea. He wanted to be the leader of the band and wanted to write everything. And me and Mark had kind of already written, you know, the Horror Infinity songs and we were kind of already together. So we didn't want to just scrap what we were doing. Plus we had gotten, uh, once we did get George down there, we did the demo without him. You know, we were getting good reviews and stuff and the guy ended up kind of coming back to us and like, hey man, can we, can we try it again, you know? We gave him a shot, and he came down, and uh, we tried to, you know, to see if he would work out as the other guitar player, but he just uh, didn't work out at all, and uh, we just kept on going anyway. That's cool. You were uh, you were part of the whole early death metal uh, movement there. How does that feel? I mean, you you got to see, uh, yeah, I mean, Chuck, I you know, definitely death saw it all happen, man. We definitely saw it take place. Um, it was cool, you know, because. Um, You know, we really didn't see it coming, you know, because Florida was kind of, it just, you know, there was nothing really, it was like everything was L.A. or New York, you know, or San Francisco, New York. Um, so we kind of figured, you know, I kind of figured we'd have to go out that way to, like, ever get anything really happening, you know. We didn't, we didn't really see that there would be, you know, a Florida scene, so to speak. It kind of, um, you know, death leprosy album had come out and that was a, kind of a big album for yeah. death metal and then uh, it wasn't long after that um, obituary and sepultura were hitting it and of course morbid angel and then atheist D kinda, side, yeah a bunch of bands huh wow yeah so it kind of like and i you know i looking back you know i think um You know, a lot of credit has to be given to Morris Sound Studios because yeah. that was kind of the uh, the one thing that kind of brought it all together. Um, Roadrunner Records too. You know, they saw that you know there was something happening, and they kind of like you know uh, started signing bands. And, yeah, yeah, started signing the you know DSI and whatnot, and um, kind of made it more of a thing. You know, and like kind of capitalized on what was going on in Florida. Wow. turned it into the quote unquote Florida scene so between Morrison and uh, you know a label like Roadrunner so how about the name Monstrosity who came up with that it's an awesome name by the way uh, Mark actually came up with it um, we had a list of names and that was that was, a, that was the tough part you know it's like writing the music and that stuff's easy it's it's deciding on the name and the, the name. logos and all that kind of stuff But, uh, wow. yeah, awesome. he came up with it, and we just kind of, uh, we just went with it. So what's the, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this, uh, Lavoisin? Lavoisin, yeah, that's my rock project. For people that don't know, what is this, uh, is, is it hard rock? Is it a different kind of, it's yeah. not death metal? It's kind of like, you know, uh, old, you know, the old, old rock, you know, without, uh, without being glam or something like that, you know, it's not really... A glam thing but it's just uh stray rock pretty much and i play all the instruments and write it all and, you know do everything um i've had a bunch of songs done forever and ever i just can't get them recorded the way i want to get them recorded um and part of that's just the budget and plus i get working on monstrosity and kind of takes uh precedence over you know that but yeah. uh, you know I, 
hopefully one day I can get it done right and get some songs out. But I've like, I've got about you know uh, two albums worth of material written. Really? Wow. Yeah, and I did a little covers album too. I got that, but uh, I'm just not happy with the production that I'm getting right. You know, for that, I want it to be better. I want it to, you know. Yeah, understood. You got your own vision. <laughs> yeah. To do it the way I want, I need a budget. You know, that's the problem. You know, a serious budget. Let's put it that way. You know. Yeah. So yeah. how about uh, how about Terrorizer? Is that done for? Some people don't know you're the guitar player for for Terrorizer. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pete's been doing the I Am Morbid thing with David Vincent, and yeah. uh, he pretty much wanted to put Terrorizer on hold. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where it's at. Um, maybe we'll get back together one day. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, How did you land that gig there? Did he call you up, or did you already know Pete? Or I've known Pete since you know '89. Basically, um, we would see him at shows and hang out, and, uh, see him around town at different, you know, parties or whatnot. And uh, so I've always known him. And then, uh, what was it, around 2013, he had just gotten back from Spain and he was at a show and I, I ran into him at a show and he was, he was uh, sober and he was clear headed and he had a good attitude and I was just like, what are you doing, man? You know, and he was said he wasn't doing anything and whatever. And I had learned the, the World Downfall album on guitar, like back in 1994, just like back when I was, I would just like learn, learn songs and learn, yeah. you know, just playing along with stuff. And that was one of the albums like I put on my list that I ended up, you know, I would play the whole album, you know, just, just playing guitar. And, uh, you know, I like there was some bands I would, you know, like this band Interval Bazaar, where like I ended up going up and playing, you know, one of the Terrorizer songs with them as like a guest. And, like, I uh, had another little project with Tony Loreno where we would play, you know, a couple Terrorizer songs. Um, so, anyway, I just, you know, when I ran into Pete that time, I was like, hey, man, I want to come over and jam World Downfall with you once. You know, I didn't, I wasn't planning on really like, you know, joining or whatever doing terrorizer necessarily because he already had a lineup on california i just wanted to play the album with him just to say you know yeah just for fun you know and just to do it um so we went you know i went over there to his house he, he only lives like 20 minutes away from me and uh so i drove over there and brought my amp with me and we uh we started playing some songs and then uh, we're like, well, you know, what are you doing next Wednesday? And so we did it again the following week and then we just kept going with it. And uh, then uh, I ran into Sam at, at the Ingve concert and uh, or yeah. show rather. Um, and, uh, you know, I told him what I was doing. I was like, hey, you know, you know, if, uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to need a bass player, singer guy, you know, if you're, if, you know, give you a call if, and sure enough so that's what I did you know it came to a point where we we wanted to play a show or whatever and I just called Sam up and brought him in on it and so nice. I would say that was so I started jamming with him in June of 2013 and by like by middle to end of July we brought Sam in and then by September we played our show we played like a backyard party kind of for free just to show everybody what we were doing and to, just kind of more of a, a fun thing rather than uh, you yeah. know, trying to get painted yet and being serious about it. And then it was after that. And we actually did that under the name Sandoval, Harris, and Molina. We didn't do it Terrorizer yet. And okay. People were calling it Terrorizer, you know, because, you know, we were playing Terrorizer songs. So everybody was telling us that we should call it Terrorizer. And finally, I think, you know, uh, we played a show in Jersey. Um, and those guys, you know, like put Terrorizer logo on the t on the show event shirt, you know. And yeah. Like, <laughs> we're, we're, we're promoting it as Terrorizer, so at that point we just went ahead and said, started calling it Terrorizer. Wow, very cool. Well, hopefully you guys get back together one day. I didn't get to catch you guys. Yeah, we had a good run, you know. The, the, the album got really good reviews, and uh, I'm real proud of the album. You know, it, it did turn out good, and 
Pete's cool, you know, no problems with Pete. And, uh, Sam's cool, you know, I still work with him from time to time in Monstrosity, so, you know, it's cool. So what? Uh, what's on your playlist, Lee? Uh, what do you listen to? Is uh, Do you listen to other type of music like country, pop, or... You mentioned hard rock with... Uh, with uh, Yeah, I do the hard rock thing. Um, I listen to, you know, the music that I'm working on a lot more than anything. Um, but, you know, I listen to all kinds of stuff. just depends. Uh, yeah. I listen to metal still. You know, I listen to a lot of new bands. I'll check out... What I tend to do now is I'll make, like... Um, I'll, you know, whatever's kind of new coming out, I'll, I'll like, I'll make, download a copy of it, and then, like, I'll make a mix CD, and then, so mostly a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm listening to mix CDs more than anything, or, like, compilation-type things, you know, and certain things will stick out more than others, you know, just yeah. depends. Cool. So, uh, what's next for yourself, Lee? What's, what's on your agenda? Do uh, you got more shows coming up, or uh, the album? Gotta finish it up. Or what's... Uh, we, we're playing in Mexico in September. Um, that's kind of the only confirmed show we have at the moment. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping. We're hoping to, um, you know, wrap up this album. But uh, you know, the problem is studio getting in. You know, it's not like you know we can. You know, there's a lot of studio scheduling issues going on, stuff like that. So. Um, like I said, the, the loose plan is to get that done, get the, the main recording done by September, and then get it get a, get it shipped off to mix, and hopefully by the you know sometime after the new year the album will come out. You have a title, a working title, or not yet, nothing yet. Looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Uh, well, thank you for your time, Lee. And uh, before we let you go, uh, would you like to send a message to your fans listening to the podcast? I uh, uh, hope to see everybody on the road and uh, keep supporting. Appreciate all the support so far, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back out there. Awesome! Thank you, Lee. Thank you for your time and uh, great chatting. Uh, hopefully, right, hopefully, I catch you in Texas soon with uh, with either band. You know. All right, buddy. What an honor to speak to a musician that existed. I'm sorry, I rephrase that. That exists, but he existed and lived and walked the earth in the late 80s when death metal was born. This guy is a witness and is a part of the whole death metal movement in the late 80s. So what an honor. And uh, it's just a big wow for this guy to have been there. And he's still alive to talk about it. And is currently relevant and is touring with monstrosity as he talked to us about. So don't forget, guys and girls, uh, go out there and support Monstrosity. Uh, look them up on social media. Uh, support them live, as I always say. Uh, go ahead and uh, go to the merch booth. Uh, purchase whatever you can afford, right? If you can't afford a t-shirt, then uh, just grab what you can, right? All that helps the band's expenses, and as we talked about. So anyways, and uh, don't forget George Fisher from Cannibal Corpse, an original of Monstrosity. So there you go. A little bit of uh, death metal history there for the ones that did not know that. So for the Cannibal fans, the new Cannibal Corpse fans, and you're a George Fisher Corpse Grinder fan, if you want to go backwards and check out his uh, previous catalog with Monstrosity, uh, go ahead and do so, and that will help the death metal community. And uh, anyways, so thank you, Mr. Harrison. Thank you for your company and your patience and for making time to talk to us about the stories of Monstrosity and your career that being said we appreciate all of the artists that have created all this death metal uh, catalog and music all the death metal artists that have created music for us fanatics i do not know where i would be if i never heard death metal and uh but i am a fan of all kinds of rock and metal but anyways thank you lee and thank you guys for checking out our podcast uh that metal interview that's t-h-a-t that metal interview podcast you can find it on any streaming format and you can also find it on youtube thank you guys for subscribing and if you haven't go ahead and do so ring the bell and don't forget to keep it metal
that middle interview.